All right, I think I actually might have fixed some ghost problems here. Uh, the ores now have tags, and I'm pretty sure that was causing... Honestly, I think that might have been causing the... Uh... Huh, just kidding. Uh, so yeah, this still breaks on a reload, but um, the arc furnace no longer goes away on a reload, so that's nice. Uh, well, that's that's <laughs> that's kind of a bummer. Um, uh, yeah, dang it. Um, but ores have tags again, which is nice. I just deleted. Um, the, uh, dynamic resources, uh, folder again for ores. Um, and that fixed the ores having tags issue, which is very nice to see. Still don't know what the tinkers issue is, because I definitely would like to reload. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Though I wonder if this is part of the issue. It has a bunch of unknown recipe categories, um, which are recipes. So for some reason, it tries to make recipes based on, or uh, categories based on certain recipes. Um, a lot of elemental craft stuff. I don't know why. And then there's like can invoke object, invoke object to string type of deal. And then like custom recipes like uh pure infusion and stuff get get bugged out as well N not really sure what the issue is there this is me looking at a log file that i've got i'm comparing it to one that the textures broke this missing section on the right here is it basically erroring and saying hey we don't have any textures which again no clue why it's kind of annoying that like bugs like this happen because it's only sometimes so you can't really actually fix it that being said i did fix the ore issue so i don't know what side effects that was causing um besides potentially the texture is broken um but either way it is indeed fixed hopefully these ore tool tips make sense to someone just coming into the pack because honestly i love them I feel like they're just super cool. But like, let's say, like, take take this for example. Like, um, do you have any nickel or anything? Yeah, like, that's so cool. And then you can like literally, can you smelt it into gold? Or you can sort for gold and zinc. And then you can literally see that right here. You can smelt it into gold. Or you can say, where's the sorting? Oh, here it is. Sort for gold and zinc. And then this is like, hey, that can be that can be smelted, or you can crush it for two washed. So then, if you take a look at this, you can see. Let's see, washing, 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 washing. Oh right, you got to crush it first. So crushing it, and then, uh, and you can see it's lit up two washed so you can wash it for two and again i do think i'm gonna switch this to infused i might do that actually like kind of right now i don't know if you can actually do multiple outputs for infused ironically i think i actually had it infusing at first and then i wanted to create create type of deal or something um uh because remember you do have to do for every single one um like like you get these from like you can you can like uh always wash it if it's the correct tier but then you have to do crumbled into washed for every tier for every type of metal because like you can't do anything with the crumbled except wash it and you can't do anything with the brick except infuse it type of deal or uh crumble it Anyway, so I might switch that over to Infusion. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I definitely will, but I'm, I'm not going to interrupt what I'm doing right now. Which is moving the interface. Um, scaffolding's Cobalt. So Cobalt doesn't have a scaffolding. I like Cobalt being used here. 
Uh, I feel like Cobalt is kind of like the, uh, almost like the techie resource. I think this uses Cobalt too, yeah. I like this. I don't know if I like Quartz Glass being this recipe still, but we'll see, we'll see. Thankfully for Cobalt, or for adding stuff, it's literally as easy as scaffolding. Then we reload, and that's pretty much it. Although I might do uh, scaffolding and maybe frame box. Frame box. I'm fairly sure we need bolts in that case, which I don't think I have yet. I do not, so we'll add it a bolt item as well. Bolt. All right, new recipes. Um, Lumium doesn't have platings, apparently. Unfortunately, that's not just something you can reload a new item in. While I'm here, though, I do think I will add platings to Signalium as well. All right, here we go. So, Cobalt Scaffolding, Lumium Plating, Formation Cores, Advanced Electronic Component, and Quartz Glass. The Quartz Glass might get switched, but we'll see. Um, cog Blocks required. When did I do this? Oh, Cog Blocks with Scaffolding. That's right, because you can do it either way. I think you can do, yeah, 3-3. Three, three. Gotcha. Um, and interfaces are the same thing, except they require electronic components and energetic alloy. I might put the quartz glass here to match it. So they both require cobalt scaffolding for now. Um, I might increase that to um, a frame box of some type, probably a cobalt frame box. Um, however, this is a significant jump in price. To begin with, I think that the frame box does have another tier as well. I think, yes, it has the whole casing. Uh, this is primarily for like machine boxes and stuff, but, or uh, not machine boxes. Um, what am I trying to say? Multi blocks. I kind of wanted to have the bolts in these this recipe but honestly i might switch this to like plates and rods well no not rods that's the thing i might switch this to plates though maybe a lot of this kind of like theory crafting stuff that i think of is kind of just like a just a thought i kind of like do it in my head and see if it like makes sense and then if it makes sense then i, I do it in real life and if it doesn't make sense or it's just kind of like meh then i don't do it like in this case there's no real reason to do this besides the like this is basically two ingots so you're going from two ingots all the way up to like if these are blocks that's like 36 and then that's another two four for like 44 ingots so you're going from two to like 44 which is a pretty big jump so if these are plates then it's just two four six eight and then 12. So it's going from 2 to, to 12, or to 14, I guess, all, to, all told. So that's why I would switch it. Uh, which, honestly, when I say it like that, it does make more sense. Um, and then I can, like, feel free, feel a little more free to, uh, to use it. But again, the frame boxes are, like, this is really, it's only four. These are two for, for most of the pack. But once you have access to the sintering oven, it is a better deal. You get one to one. Um, but once you have access to four, then it's only 16, and then two, 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 so 24. So it's two plus 24, which is still better, but uh, yeah. So four, eight, and then 12, yeah. I might switch to plate, these to plates either way. I think I probably will. So these, this one here, new part recipes, is um, where I do all of my uh, recipes, my auto auto generated recipes. Um, it's definitely useful to have that. All right, so I did switch that. Uh, these are just pl it requires plates. It does require bolts still. Um, and then the next tier up requires the panels and bolts. 
which panels are a, pretty much a block each. Hard, hard, uh, something. You can't, you can't reduce it. Um, so it is pretty pricey still, but when it's all said and done, it's, it's actually not that pricey, especially with the tier you're going to be at when you use them. All right. I don't know if this is going to be the finished recipe for either of these. Um, but where the heck did you go? There you are. So far, I do kind of like it. I don't know if I like just how matchy-matchy they are. Um, this is Annihilation and Formation. Um, I think these are supposed to represent items coming or going from your AE system. And this is just Formation. Uh, and then there's the more advanced component. I think I'll switch this scaffolding out uh, for maybe like a Signalium one. I don't know if I want to do quite that, though. I do think I'll switch it out, though. Um, and then this one here, Energetic Alloy Plating. I don't know if I want that either, to be completely honest. But we'll see. Resources are, like, the easiest thing to switch, so... I'll play with it and see if I like it, and then if not, then I'll switch it. So I've done a bit of work on the alloys here. Um, I've renamed them to Stage, like Stage 1 Magical Alloy. If you have a better suggestion for that, let me know. Uh, I've also thought level or degree, like first degree, second degree, um, level one. I don't want to do tier because the it won't line up. Like stage two is a tier three alloy. Stage three is a tier five. It skips a tier. So I definitely, I'm definitely a. I don't want to do tier because then it'll be tier two is a tier three and that makes no sense so if you have a suggestion for the name feel free i did also color the name um based on the element so this is yellow for air type of deal so i've added Flux seed growing in the crystallizer, like a pre-enrichment chamber type of deal. Um, and also Certus Quartz as well. The interface and the pattern provider, I think I've settled on their final configuration here. I feel pretty good about this. Flux Steel Scaffolding. Um, Flux Steel is actually fairly expensive at this stage in the game, which is why I added the uh, Quartz Seed recipe. Um, plating is also expensive in this stage of the game, but I'm using, uh, this combo here, the scaffolding and plating versus, um, it's like, this feels pretty good. I feel like, uh, scaffolding and plating versus the frame box. I did lower the cost of frame boxes, but it's still fairly significant and it, it just felt a little bit cruel. I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm trying to make it so that you need to get resources. And then the resources you get are actually useful. Like if you have infinite resources, I want you to actually have a reason to have them. Because otherwise it's like, why even, you know, why even bother like setting up uh, ore processing or generation? It's all kind of like whatever if you don't actually use it. That being said, I don't want stuff to be tedious at this stage of the game. I want it to kind of be like, yeah, I got like, you know, I'm using like a block or something. Like, this is like as much processing as I really want in this stage of the game, really. Um, obviously, some of it. I do want to make these more expensive as well, but not more tedious. I want to make them less tedious and more expensive. So I'm not sure how I want to do that just yet. Maybe I'll do like an aluminum scaffolding or frame box or something. I don't know. I've been thinking about this for a bit. Still haven't really decided how I want to go about it. I considered making these cost plating, but that feels brutal. That being said, I do think I want to make an interface or two uh, just to see how this feels. Flux Steel does have a... Um, alloy recipe or a tinkerer's recipe now um 
this is the same amount of ingredients as it would be to craft it like this with the carbonic flux. Um, it's just in f molten form. So I added a fluke flux uh, molten as well. We're going to do that. I've also started growing some crystals here. Still chilling. There is this extra flux crystal recipe if you use redstone acid. Very efficient. So I'm going to hijack my little setup right here and make some cheeky flux crystal. Oh, that's not ideal. What's it doing now? Rose quartz. Um, huh. I mean, that's fine. Oh, it's making the... Come on. It's making the bad flux, not using the uh, redstone acid. Well, that's kind of annoying, but honestly fair. Another benefit of that particular recipe um, is it makes the crystal, not the dust. So that's cool. Huh? Why isn't that working? There we go. Not really sure why that wasn't working. I wonder if I shouldn't remove this recipe and maybe make this three. Yeah, I'll do that. I think these are both. Oh no, that isn't mine. I'm just going to keep it four because there's really no reason to nerf it. Seeing as how you can get them infinitely anyway. Like, literally not a big deal. Was that shapeless? I was just shapeless crafting it. I really need to set up proper processing. I just manually am processing all this ore. There's a lot of stuff I need to set up, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. This is fine. This is fine. Alright. I officially have Bluix. This is 20 RF a tick. That might be a minute. That's fine, though. It's supposed to be passive. Um, I need to feed the, the items. Well, I'm definitely burning through resources. For sure. Um, so that's good. I want to be. Um, and right now... Uh, yeah, I mean, I basically just go grab some more if I need more. It's really not like... A, very time-consuming thing to go grab more, especially if I invested in fortune right now, which I definitely could. Um, there are ways to do it. I personally am not going to do that. Um, I don't want to make it the intended route. I'd rather invest in ore generation uh, with the drilling machine, um, which is kind of what I'm working on. Sort of. I'm also working on getting um, interface up which means uh, a lot of stuff, um, but a uh, fluid or fluix production as well. So, so yeah, I'm getting iron so I can get um, wait, why did this not give me oh, because I didn't have full stack, yeah. I'm getting iron so I can get uh, hopper so I can automate Fluix, so I can get Fluix Steel, so I can get the ME interface. Ironically, I totally have enough just to do this, so it's really not quite that drastic, but still. It's not like I have to produce, like, or process, like, two stacks of iron just to, just to build one hopper. It is important to note, stuff that can't be smelted, uh, for example, like this, nickel grit. Wait, is melting back? No. It's an arbitrary amount. Anyway, stuff that can't be melted, or, sorry, smelted, um, will get voided if you, if you try to smelt it. Uh, I do have my filter filter set up, so I'm pretty sure it'll just go through, because it can't actually be smelted, um, but just keep that in mind before you just dump everything on the uh, belt. I just realized, I believe the crystallizer can do auto input and output, 
So I'm pretty sure I can just do this, and then once it's done with the recipe, it should just grab it and pull it, put it back in. Here we go, and yep, perfect. Alright, so that'll passively generate me some Flux Crystals. It's honestly quite a bit slower than just dropping them in there, but uh, yeah. This is kind of awkward. Now I put all of my Flux into this, so I guess I will just do one of these. Actually, I should probably just do that. Just do two stacks like this, because I don't really need it to be passive right now. I'd actually just need, like, the flux. So I'm kind of thinking, I don't know... See, it's like, part of me definitely says, I'll save a lot of resources if I rush metal press, like, significant amount. Uh, like, they'll be, like, half as ch uh, cheap, basically. Half as expensive. Because I can make these with four plates instead of a block. And cobalt brass is actually not too bad. Um, this is... Yeah. See, it's it's really not that bad. Um, I think you can... Can you alloy it? You can. Cool. So I've decided to get rid of dura aluminum. This is kind of a... Alamancy um, material. The um, reason I decided to get rid of it was because it accidentally was crafted when I was trying to make cobalt brass. And then I realized it was still in there. And decided to, uh, yeah, just ax it. Alright, so I'm doing a lot in this melt tree here. I'm hoping that I don't screw things up. I do have flux steel, so that is a big plus. Uh, I think I'll have a little bit more when it's all said and done. Yes, I only need... Oh, whoops. I should cast it out into, uh, rods. Um, and then I got quite a bit of cobalt brass. Three ingots left. Um, I also need a lot more cobalt and aluminum. The induction smelter can be used for a lot of these more simple alloys, which I'm actually really looking forward to using to passive. I, uh, I enjoy it. I like this alloy a lot. It's very clean, even though it's not actually really, like, one I made up. I need to go farm some more luminite for, uh, fuel here at some point. Because I don't have enough blazing blood. I wonder if I really should wait. I think I will. It's just so many more resources. At the same time, I do have enough to make two interfaces right now. And that feels silly not to. Honestly. Doesn't it? I mean, sure, it's expensive. Until I get this. Um, hmm. I mean, realistically speaking, it's more like, what can I use them for? And I feel like I won't be able to use... See, like, this is where it'd be nice if, like, these were, like, nice to have as an interface. Let me think about this for a minute. Just doing a slight experiment here. It does seem like you can actually request fluids. Which is pretty crazy. There's no way you're going to be able to, at least at this stage in the in the pack, um, make the brick chain and with uh, interfaces, and you're not really supposed to. Um, there's a couple things you would want an interface for. I would say supplying resources to potentially a simulation chamber, maybe. Just kind of threw that in there, really. Um, power, I would say, is a big one. Um, and then we've got, I would say, processing recipes. Potentially. Um, crafting recipes. Uh, as long as it's not too many. Like, if it takes, like, blocks. Um, so, I mean, like, it could be, like, the sequential fabricator type of deal. Um... 
We still have this to deal with. Like, for example, we could just passive engineering blocks. But the thing is, is you don't really need to, I would say. Uh, it would be nice if I had the induction smelter were sooner, to be completely honest. And I obviously could just bump this to, like, here type of deal. I don't know if I want to do that, though, to be honest. I think I'm just going to hold off on this, crafting it this second. I think I'm going to need it a lot more once I have these unlocked. So let's just craft these. I do like this recipe, I think, though. I might swap this glass out for something else, and I might... Uh, figure out a new electronic component that's like a flux component at some point, but not right now. I'm just going to craft these for now. I have almost everything. Just kidding. Yeah, I need... Uh, I mean, I do have these, which are the only thing that's actually annoying to do. So that's a start. I did make a new paper uh, for the components. So that's definitely a thing. Oh, whoops. Yeah, fun times. Thankfully, it's just lapis. All right. You could say I'm overthinking the early game, and you definitely could be right. Um, but I feel like this is kind of like the hook. If people are interested in the early game, then they'll they have a much higher chance of actually, you know, playing the mod pack all the way through. And for AE stuff, I feel like it's pretty crucial that it, uh, you know, exists. All right, I think I know what I want to do. I think I'm going to do charcoal. So, huh. I really like having them in this. I know it's like, I don't know. I just, it feels good for some reason. All right, there we go, interface. So I think what I'm going to end up using this interface for is, um, like I said, the steam engine for now. I might do it for more, or I might just craft up that other one. But yeah. Dang it. One thing that is important to note, uh, if you haven't used... If you aren't familiar with the modding scene, is that Tinkerer's stuff just looks fancy. Uh, like this, the faucets and stuff. Technically, these just store fluids. And then it's just a regular recipe after that. So I just piped it back in. So if you haven't played applied energistics much interfaces are basically like a like they can give stuff to the network and then they can stock stuff so what i'm doing here is essentially requesting three flux cables um and then i just you know have them um obviously that's quite useful and then you can give stuff back to the network so my plan is to use it for wood. So I'm going to need another storage bus. I need a lot of pistons. I feel like I've always just been like... There we go. I'm just going to craft as many as I need. And then I need, like, a lot. Because it's actually three pistons, I think. Because, like, that's, uh, yeah. There we go. So this is going to go on this crate right here. The one with the logs on it. Um, and then I'm going to connect it to the network. I just connected it underneath. Now I've got the logs. Pretty much every multi-block requires steel of some sort. Um like steel scaffolding, steel fence, and then some either iron sheet metal or pipes. Those are the most common. Generator blocks, yeah, fun times. Um, so what I'm thinking is, maybe I... It kind of feels kind of sacrilegious to remove the steel, but maybe I do like a, a steel casing. Uh... No, we'll see. I gotta keep brainstorming this. You're probably like, no, stop, don't make it worse. I'm planning on making it easier to craft, but more expensive. And I want to have less materials, too. Like, right now, I've got four separate items. I want to do three tops, I would say. Probably, like, um, a corner, uh, edge, 
a corner, a middle, and a center. And I would say probably the precision, and then I would say two materials. So in other words, like, do like gears or whatever. Same thing with this, I would say. And I want at least one of them to have overlap, which is why I have the aluminum rods here. Cobalt. Back in the nether to get some more, finish up my uh, steam engine. And uh, realized that I needed cobalt. Having a magnet is super nice. Hey, look, silver. Grassy nether rock? That's weird. Hey, some nickel, too. I was, I was actually needing this. I'm to go on what's basically a suicide mission because I have Slash Home. I'm coming for you, Blaze. Oh. That would have been awkward. I think I can pump lava straight from the nether. That actually might be a pretty good alternative. Because that... Uh, Magma Crucible takes an absurd amount of, uh, power. Ooh, nice, some Luminite. That's gonna come in handy. Okay, eventually I'll get through it. Ho oh, ho ho, this is nice. Uh, hang on. Spider Eye, too, okay. Oh, hey, look, cobalt. This is huge. Look at all this. Man, I should have been back here mining like ages ago. I should probably get out of here. I'm not very good at avoiding lava. I might go try and take out that boss if I can reach it. Actually, no, I'm not going to. It was a very profitable trip. I even got some phantom membrane. Man, I like that. The ore drops the uh, mob drops now. I actually really like that. Okay, what did we get? A uh, stack and a half of quartz, blaze rod, some phantom membrane, ender pearl, crimson fungus. Totally going to be useful. Um... Almost two stacks of cobalt, half a stack of nickel, bunch of luminite. That's pretty huge. I'm going to go melt this up. Yeah, we're almost out. Hopefully there's enough for that. I think so. Oh, um, yeah, that's fine. And then we got a little bit of mithril. Um, a little bit of lead. Wow. That was a silver vein and a half. Um, perfect. I'll go drop these in the crusher arcanite lead silver yeah there's really no reason to ever not crush your ores unless you have a specific um like you want like tier one stuff from your compound ores that's what i'm most excited about for the interfaces i would say is ore processing anyway I'm going to keep using these sinks for water, I think. So I might actually just move this a little bit. Actually, uh, huh. What if I, hmm, what if I use Coke ovens to make, what if I use Coke ovens to make, um, charcoal? I think that's really slow. How slow is this? Does it say? Apparently not. Because then I can use the creosol for fuel as well. Let me try that. Hopefully, actually, I have an extra one, so it should be fine. I don't know if this is removable after it's been added. Like, it might just turn into, like, a... What did I do? Huh? Oh, I'm feeding it a torch, I think. Fluid can... Oh, it's like a... Okay, okay. Oh, interesting. So... Oh, that's... Hmm. I'm so confused. 
Uh, yeah, so apparently you can duplicate straws like that. Which is honestly not something I feel like fixing. So uh, yeah, enjoy that. Um, yep. Let's see how quick this is. It seems like it's going to be... About a minute, I would say. Let's say six seconds took about 10%, so that'd be a minute. And then, um, if six seconds are a minute per log, then the creosote that it gets is a quarter bucket, which means that every four minutes it gets a creosote. So, yeah. I don't know how long a uh, charcoal burns, though. Regardless, the best thing to do is for sure just the regular smelter. I wonder if this is going to be a problem. The tree's so close. It's really kind of embarrassing how badly I'm setting this up. But, uh, you know what? I'm not actually embarrassed. Okay, we have wood. Now we just need to make sure that it actually gets cooked. Alright, only charcoal can pass through. Boom. Um... The irony is I'm not actually using um, the interface. So now that we have charcoal, we're also going to need and to store it. Uh, we're going to need to store it somewhere where it's actually accessible to the arm. So I think we're going to do another uh, a depot. Uh, we're going to use a funnel onto the depot from a drawer. And then we're going to use a void upgrade on the drawer so it doesn't cause major issues. All right, and there's our charcoal setup. So, in theory, this should work fine. It will only do one charcoal at a time, which I think is not a problem. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if this is going to leave us with any wood, but that's fine. There is the fire I expected. Um, I think I can just cover this. All right. I think this is fine. Actually, this might make perpetual fire. Oh, my word. Because it should just keep spreading to the new trees. Good times. <laughs> uh, I'm so good at this game. Fire has indeed stopped. These panes or glass blocks are definitely the move here. I've also sped this up significantly so that it's actually like, you know, Decent. Um, yeah. How do you do this? Wait, can I put mechanical arms sideways? That could be fun. Also, can they get an input like uh, this? No, doesn't look like it. If I had, like, a room, I would totally do an upside-down mechanical arm. There we go. I did a vertical gearbox, and then I did chain drives underneath. One thing you can do, if you don't mind uh, exactly how it rotates, or uh, stuff about having random belts, is you can actually use belts to rotate things like i could have just swapped these out with like a belt but uh yeah here we are okay so this needs to be too taller as you can see on the tooltip i'm curious to know how fast that is whoa okay um so it's fast apparently it's five fast snap so Okay, I think if I superheat it, it would work. And then I would need to make it one taller. 
Uh, what? What the heck? Why is like that one like that? Oh, it looks like that's like that. That's how I want it, I think. Yeah, so that was definitely it. It was how the shaft was positioned. So in theory, I can actually just rotate the end of it. Yeah, there we go. I think this is how I want it. We officially have an absurd amount of power. Um, this is generating 65,000 stress units uh, passively. So that's good. Of course, create really is passive. So um, I think our previous setup was uh, 5,000. 5,000 is respectable, but not compared to 65,000. And we should have a surplus of charcoal eventually that I can just storage bus and then we can use it for other things. Why could I rotate these? But now I can't. Doesn't work with the wrench either. I bet it's because they're connected. So if I disconnect and do them one at a time, should be fine. So I'm going to have to disconnect everything. Now... Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. And I wonder if this will work too. Well, this, yeah, perfect. Okay, now we're good. So in theory, we should see the new limit show up. And there it is, 70,000 stress units. We're going to raise this up uh, to 64 for now. Twice as fast as it was for every machine on the network. I don't think anything can go too fast, so we should be fine. Okay, this can still light stuff on fire, so... Also, it seems to light... Is it lighting this chain drive? Because that would be uncool. Honestly, having lava next to your tree farm is never a good idea anyway, so that's kind of on me. But in other news, we are rising on charcoal, maybe? 687? I'll have to keep an eye on that. 687 right now, though. This episode is probably going to be a little long, and I maybe I should have split it up, but uh, we're just going to roll with it. We want to see this above 700. All right, now that we have steam engines, I want to get this. This is my next project. I'm going to need to craft a few more crafters, though. However, now that I have my ores, I, I said that like I was just talking about ores, but uh, I said everything can be crushed. Not everything should be washed right away because you can then, uh, you, you basically cap it at 2x. If you process it one more time, you can refine it into 4x, which is definitely something I want to pick up eventually soon hopefully um all i really need is the crusher and then i get 4x so that's definitely something i want to do i can also just smelt them right now for 1x pretty trash but uh it exists i'm gonna see if this works haha <laughs> not only does it work it connects them i might get rid of that windmill maybe it's not contributing very much anymore honestly I might actually make like a sort of, I, I don't want to say base, but I might make like a platform that's not grass to put my machines on. This works. Put this right here and we're good to go. Actually, I don't really need this here, do I? Because it won't, it just won't, whoa, that was a mistake. Um, yeah, I vein mined some dirt. Fill in your holes, kids. Or or sort of fake fill them in. Alright, so there's our recipe. Well, let's get started. Uh, four blocks of brass. I'm going to need some more of that. Uh, let's see, that is copper and zinc. 
Oof, that's low. I think it's two to one. So that's I need eleven zinc. That'll make thirty-three. And I've already got twelve. So it'll be forty-five, which is more than the thirty-six we need. Actually, it probably isn't because I need these plates as well. Uh let's see, I needed what eleven? And then I need uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at that. Perfect. Uh, spout. Got one of those. Let me cook this up. That's not ideal. I'm guessing this happened because of the fire, though. Actually, you know, this is probably full of ash or something. Well, it's not full of ash, but it's full of stuff. Oh, you know what is full of ash? This thing. This is not a very foolproof system. Alright, now we get it started again. Most of this stuff I've actually crafted already. Uh, and I've, also, I've just bulk crafted pretty much all of it. So I have enough of almost everything. Very, very close on the brass though. I'm out of tunnels. Uncool. Here we go. Copper casing. Copper casing. Drill. I don't think I have a drill. I do. Sweet. Okay, so the drill goes in the middle. The tubes, mechanisms, plate, plate, plate. I think it was plate. Plate, 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 I think. And then spout, casing, funnel. I think this was in the middle, that side, that side. And then copper casing, and then sturdy sheet, and then the blocks. You know what? I bet I casted almost all my brass already. I don't have enough fuel either, so good thing I melted some. All I need to do is put it in a bucket and throw it back in the tank. Just like that. Perfect. Got a whopping six extra. Can you say just enough? Alright, I do have to supply this with actual rotational force. There we go. Wow, that's fast. And this should just stay right here. Oh, nope. Perfect. Even better. Oh, you can really see the red here. Alright, so this quest gives you the ore vein finder. Uh, and it basically works kind of... Oh, there we go. That's cool. Um, it works on a chunk basis. So, like, in this chunk... I forget what the thing is. Apparently it's F3G. Yep. So, um, I want to check each chunk, basically. So, is the blue the corners? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. So, we've got four right here. Nothing, 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 nothing. So, nearby, I believe, is one chunk away. And then, traces of, I believe, is two chunks away. So, let's just keep looking here. Nothing, 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 nothing. Wow, this is pretty, pretty poor. Hey, we got some densite here. Um, let's see what we can get from densite. Aluminum, silver, tin, magnesium, osmium, ostrom, iridium, and uru. Okay. Not bad. Tin, silver, aluminum, magnesium, and osmium. Uh, the last couple are probably going to be irrelevant. Uh, they're definitely relevant right now. Osmium and magnesium are, I would say, irrelevant right now as well. But, so we're going to keep looking. Nothing. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Nothing. 
Binsight vein here. Copper, arcanite, cobalt, titanium. This one's a great one. So tin and copper, silver and arcanite. I mean, I pretty much need all of them, I would say. Also, ironically, I could have had the sifter working this whole time. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, we have Vincite right here. Or, yeah, Vincite. Nothing. 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 Oh, and more Vincite. I mean, these are meant to be farther apart. Um... The idea being another insight. Wow. The idea being that if you can um, use like trains or whatever, if you feel like it. However, these this is way too close for trains. Copper, zinc, nickel, uranium, platinum. Right. Um. I think I might go. Hmm. Silver or zinc or arcanite. Cobalt's nice. Nickel's nice. Oof, tough call. All right, so we've got three kind of equally spaced from my base. I think I might go this in more tight uh, for the copper and zinc. I can make like basically just infinite brass. Densite might be good a little bit later on for the tin, silver, all that good stuff. I really wanted an iron one, but uh, we'll have to do, deal with what we got. I wonder why this nether portal only looks purple if I'm not looking at it. Oh, wait. Well, that's really weird. So if I'm like this much looking at it, huh? By the way, we're almost maxed out on charcoal. There's the amortite vein. Okay, so we can expect zinc, nickel, uranium, and platinum um, around this point. All useful, but not ex all of what we need. Uh, needs drill item. Resource remaining 20k, 19k technically. All right, cool. I could feed this directly into an interface. So I'm pretty sure it exports right here. So I think I'm just going to rotate this. Can I actually like literally rotate it? No. I forgot I had this little millstone set up. All right, finally I've set up late automation oh hello i'm also going to do a little bit of brick automation i think so like super little bit um basically just like a press here and then like a clay kind of a thing All right, so this will make bricks. Uh, I wonder if I shouldn't make... Well, no, it's fine. That's slow. I should do parallel or something. But this is just for passiving right now. All right. I kind of want to do a floor, which is why I'm doing that. That's like a stack of bricks. It's pretty bad. I think I'm going to do all of my clay. I actually have a little bit more in here. Man, this is a hodgepodge of a base. That's a lot of bricks. And this is very slow. So I think I'm going to raise it up a little bit so it's even with this. So that this kind of like feeds into there. I wonder if I can do like literally that. No. 
does not surprise me. This is um, a very nice building uh, principle here. Like, the professionals will, will use red terracotta and like a little floating platform like this to build. So, just in case you're wondering, I'm a professional. There we go. We officially have uh, 20,000 in Mordite. Sort of. I think I can speed this up like quite a bit. Actually, let's check how much it consumes. I think it uses like 20,000. It's kind of huge, actually. Let's see if I can speed it up at all. Yeah. Go to 80. Okay, so I am going to just do a temporary setup here. And actually, I realize this is just going to void. Uh, wait, can grit be crushed? No. So it's going to void all the grit. Hmm, not really ideal. So right off the bat, we get Immortite Grit, uh, which we want to wash into Immortite Dust. Now the Immortite Dust is going to be able to turn into Sulfur, um, or we can sift it, and then we can turn it into Fluorite later on. Uh, neither of those are particularly useful right this second. Uh, so we can also smelt it directly into copper ingot. So it'd be nice to have like a bypass as well. Uh, I might set that up as well. Because I will be smelting the copper grit. There's no reason to wash this. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to smelt it and then stash it. So one thing you can do is shift right click on the controller and it'll show you a preview. There's also a multi-block builder you can use. Apparently it doesn't work great. Alright, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I've got... sort of war processing. Um, I do have the sorting for this tier. Um, wait. Okay, that's fair. Um, I do have the sorting set up here, but I'm going to just stash the ores so that I can do it again, because I basically have the crusher unlocked. Um... And then I'm smelting the grit. Which I'm probably going to lower that. That seems really high. We'll see the ratios, but like, um, for example, we can get this from here. 25% chance. Like, I think that should be like 5 or 20. And then um, you process it and you get another 10. So it's a 35% chance. I might lower the chance, but we'll see. Because honestly, it's, it's just free copper. Anyway, that's me for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.